Okay, welcome, welcome again. All right, this is a continuation of what I call the tax tip series. And I'm doing this for many taxpayers out there and small business owners, hopefully might help you. So this episode, we're going to be talking about business depreciation, assets, cars, computer, furniture. Um, and one of the things I want to bring up, which I think that most taxpayers and business owners um, really are not aware of, is that there's three really, I kind of, you can say like three methods that you can use to deduct as a business owner. And one of them is not very known. And I want to share that with you. Yes. Okay. And it's called, as you can see, I'm sharing here the screen like I usually do. It's called the Minimus Safe Harbor Election. Okay. So again, that's the Minimus Safe Harbor Election. Now, small businesses can elect to express assets and cost less than $2,500. So if you purchase an item, an asset, right, that is less than $2,500, let's say that you have perhaps a, a laptop, right? Or maybe you bought yourself a printer or perhaps, um, I don't know, a, a, a TV projection, something that you needed to have, again, right, to use for your business, or for, you know, the convenience of your clients or customers, right? And as long as your uh, price ticket and you pay less than $2,500, you can go ahead and have, you, whether you do it yourself, tax preparation, hopefully if your business, uh, I would imagine that hopefully you can afford uh, to hire a professional to do it because these are the important steps where I think that, um, as a professional, we bring a lot of value to, to clients. It's not only, uh, you know, uh, doing the tax return, it's taking, you know, all the benefits and the tax, tax deductions available, right, to apply. And a lot of times, yeah, you can be watching a lot of YouTube videos like right now, but going in depth into your return and have a good view of where you're at in how those taxes can be reduced are super, super important for anyone. So anyhow, jump back in. So it's called the minimus. Now, the safe harbor will allow you, like I said, any items you purchase under $2,500, you're eligible to take the full amount, okay? And the nice thing about it is that you don't have to worry about depreciation and all that stuff. You just do it once and that's it. Okay, now in regards to, yes, by the way, I'm Liz Soria. I am a tax accountant. If you have a bookkeeper or your accountant, hopefully he or she understands this, that it's important that perhaps even in recording the transaction inside your accounting software, you might have a separate category just for this. Okay, it will make it so easy, not only to yourself, like I said, if you're doing it yourself, um, but if not even for your tax, uh, you know, CPA or so on, that they know that they need to apply this, this uh, type of deduction against those assets that you specifically purchase for that, okay? Second method, section 179 deduction. I'm sure you heard about this one. Now, section 179 is allowing you up to a million dollars, a little bit above one million dollars. Um, that means that that's your total um, a deduction that you're able to get in one single tax year, okay? So combine all your assets, okay? The maximum deduction you can get is really about a million eighty, okay? Now, there is a, what we consider a maximum, okay, purchase asset that you can do, okay? This is a deduction. The purchase asset is actually two millions and a half, okay? So two and a half million dollars, that you can maximum buy anything at or above that amount is gonna decrease the amount. Okay. So again, a million eighty, that's only the maximum you're allowed to deduct as a 179. And the maximum that you can do so is up to two and a half million dollars. Hopefully that's clear enough. Now, people ask me, what about the bonus depreciation, right? I think it's fantastic. If you can take advantage of it, great. Again, it's all about tax planning and trying to make it comparable of what's going to be more beneficial to you, right? So why will you use bonus depreciation? Well, first of all, you can deduct 100%, as you can see I'm highlighting here, okay? And that could be equipment, and it could be machines, and computer, and appliances, and furniture, right? 
And that is what you can do with the business the depreciation. Now, let me just share something else. A lot of times I see business owners that are really interested in saying, well, you know what? For example, I have a heavy pickup on SUV. As long as it's over 6,000 pounds, okay, you're able to depreciate it up to 100%. Okay, now I want to be very clear. Okay, um, one of the things that, and I'm sorry, I would take it back, that goes for section 170, the 6,000 pound restriction. The bonus depreciation mm -mm, doesn't have it. That's right. So in the caveat with that is that section 179 does not allow you to use that deduction if you're transporting other people in your vehicle. That's right. So for example, if it happens to be your, you know, some sort of taxi driver or a Uber or, or you're transporting patients or whatever it might be, okay, you cannot do so with section 179. That's right. But you can do with bonus depreciation. Okay. Now let me give you a comparable. Let's say that you purchase an SUV. An SUV, let's say that with section 179, by the way, it doesn't have to be new. It has to be what's called like new to you. So that means, yes, you can buy use, but it has to be purchased in that use in that year. And mostly important is not only purchased in the year, but it has to be in service. So if you buy a vehicle and you live in your garage on your driveway and you have not put it to service, then that means you're not technically eligible to apply for that section 179, okay? So I want to just be kind of clear. Uh, I, 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 I always try to avoid any kind of misunderstandings because as you probably know, tax indeed is very complex. And no matter how, how you know, we all try our very best um, to explain it to the standard business owner, um, it's kind of sometimes not completely 100% clear. So... Hopefully I'm being clear with this video, but the most important thing that I want you to understand is there's a differential, okay? So like I said, you could buy a vehicle in section 179 and you might get a deduction of, let's say in the first year, 10,100, just throwing you an average. But if you use, for example, the bonus depreciation, you could get $18,000. That's right, that's almost $7,000 more. So it's very beneficial for certain things. Now, the catch-22 is that when you use the bonus depreciation, and let's say you have two vehicles, just giving you a valid example, and you say, you know what, Liz, I think I'm going to go ahead and use one vehicle for Section 179 and the other one because I do have, I have to transport patients or clients or whatever it might be, right? Then I'm going to use section 179, another one bonus. Mm -mm. It has to, if you're going to use the bonus depreciation, it has to be used for all the same asset category. Okay. So you can use an equipment that you just purchase maybe for your warehouse or whatever it might be, but then you can use that for section 179. But if it's the same asset, it has to be used the same type of deduction. Okay. So again, if you have bonus depreciation and that's what you want to utilize for this year, then in that case, and you have two vehicles, both of them have to be under the bonus depreciation, okay? It's not picking and choosing which one. It has to be the same category, the same type of method for deduction, okay? And I think what's important also is that section 179, like I said, has a lot more lim limitation. Another thing I want to bring up to your attention is, for example, you have to have a profit or net income at the end of the tax year. Bonus depreciation, you don't have to. That's big plus, okay? Bonus depreciation sometimes allows you only to use over 50% of the vehicle. Section 179, usually you have to use it 100%, okay? So these are small little things. And of course, there's a lot more into it, but at least to have it in a nutshell, as I'm trying to create these, I call it tax tips bits of small digestible, you know, information um, 
to help, you know, again, small businesses like you, whether you're a freelancer, whatever it is. So always contemplate which one's going to be more beneficial to you. Always. Um, so I hope this has helped some way, somehow. And like I said, my name is Liz. Sorry, I am a tax accountant. Um, I love what I do. And uh, I've been sharing a lot of good content here uh, in my channel for the last, you know, I don't know, 10 plus years. It's been a long, long time. Um, and if um, you want to make any comments, suggestions, I appreciate uh, you coming and uh, watching my videos and my channel. Please like and subscribe. Obviously, it always helps with the algorithm. Uh, we do offer, like I said, this free content. Um, and if you need more in-depth help and you need someone to do a tax review and a checkup and make sure that everything is second opinion like you get with your doctor, I'm here in my team. So please feel free to reach out to us. And I want to thank you so much. And I will be seeing you in the next video. Like I said, I'm, if you haven't missed the other videos, there's a few other ones. They're, they call the tax tip series and you can watch those and hopefully they can help you a lot and at least give you some clarity, right? Which is the most important thing. Anyhow, I will be seeing you in the next video. Take care and thank you so much. Bye-bye.